Well, hello and welcome to all of our viewers here today. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. We are sitting down with one of our very special presenters here at Gold Lactation 2021. We've got Carlene Gribble, who is well known, I feel, at Gold Lactation already. Welcome back, Carlene. It's so good to have you here today. Uh, it's my pleasure, Fiona. So Carlene, welcome back to Gold. Uh, we couldn't uh, pass up the opportunity to invite you once again to be part of this conference. Um, this is gonna be a really good topic um, to share and talk about. I know lots of people might have questions as well. And so the topic you're talking about is COVID-19 guidance for maternal and newborn care, who's doing what and why. So we'll get into that in just a minute, but for everybody out there who hasn't had an opportunity to meet you yet, I would love it if you'd introduce yourself, tell us where you are in the world and a little bit about your life there. Oh, sure, Fiona. Um, well, I'm in Australia. So I'm Australian. I'm a, a, an, an adjunct at um, Western Sydney University. And so uh, my work there is around uh, infant feeding um, and also uh, child protection, adoption, um, foster care. Um, but um, I mean, I'm here for the conference to speak about infant feeding and emergencies type stuff. And, and that's mm -hmm. an area that I've done work in for about 15 years now. So we always have emergencies and, um, and mothers and infants are always vulnerable in those emergencies and, and need good support. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that when I started looking at this area a few years ago, I think I was shocked uh, actually to find out about policies surrounding infant and young child and feeding incidences in emergencies because there was more policies in uh, uh, with uh, pets and animals than there were for infants and feeding. So it just surprised me. And I think some folks are still surprised when I share that information with them, Carlene. Do you still get the same responses when you're teaching on this? Yeah, I do. And I mean, like I live in an emergency prone area. And in fact, um, last summer, um, we really were threatened here yeah. at our home by the bushfires for about mm -hmm. six weeks. It, we were getting up every morning and going, okay, what's the weather doing today? You know, what do we need to do? Are we going to stay? Are we going to leave? Um, those were sorts of, uh, you know, that was, that was our life. That was our emergency a year ago. Um, but um, here, here in Australia, it's just the same. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I actually did some research looking at this and collected all the guidance. I knew there was nothing in there about um, infant feeding, and um, but I had to prove it, had to count mm -hmm. it. But I did count how much there was for pets, and we're so much better prepared for pets, but but wild animals and, and stock as well, farm animals as well. So yeah, um, we've got our priorities wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do. We really do. You do. And I, and I feel over mm. the years, you have really become one of the authorities in this area. And so, you know, thank you to you. Um, really, I've used your work um, in the situations that I have been in. And I've been able to assist in a few um, disaster areas now. And, um, you know, and, mm. and I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate it on different levels of having the tools that to guide me and the things that you've researched. So um, from for me personally, I, I just wanted to say that to you today just to thank you um that your work gets utilized so much but for me personally i i thank you uh, you you're very welcome i mean um that's what i do it for because um because we need we need people to be empowered to actually be able to go out mm -hmm. and to to do the work because there are emergencies everywhere and you know just at the moment in my region um, we're very concerned about what's happening in Timor-Leste, you know, that's mm. very close to Australia and they've right. had terrible flooding there. Mm. Um, and um, it's a very poorly resourced country. And you know, in those circumstances, breastfeeding is the, the thing that really protects those babies. Right. Um, and there needs to be good support. They need to be protected. Mothers need to be supported. Um, it's so important. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to ask you a couple of things about you that I didn't actually know. And that's just about the other things that you're involved in. A um, couple of things were, you know, of interest to me as well, um, that um, I've just had very, I've done very little work in, but have been often blessed to be involved in as well. And that's with uh, things like, you know, adoption. Now, I know you work in adoption reform. Have you worked in uh, adoption reform for some time? Or it, how did you get into those types of things as well, Carlene? Was it because of a passion or what happened? Uh, well, I'm an adoptive mother. So I have, ah. so two of my children are adopted. Um, and um, and I, so I got, so I got involved uh, because I became, I understood more about uh, what adoption involved. I understood more about um, really the, I guess, the cost of separating infants from their mothers. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, that partly came through my personal experience and, and that's, you know, partly why I became so passionate about that as well. Mm -hmm. And so the need to actually um, ensure that uh, children are, um, are kept with their mothers, if at all possible, and that they're supported to, to look after them. Mm -hmm. um, and But if they're not, that they're actually able to have... Um, permanent uh, safe and, and loving homes um, mm. with an alternate family right. um, and yet maintain connections to their family of origin so so those things are really um, important to me as well but actually they're all centered um, you know it all comes together there around you know the importance of the um, mother and infant and keeping them together um, and supporting mothers uh, wherever possible. Because if you can't, um, if that's not possible, there is a cost. Um, so you want to avoid it if you can. Yeah, absolutely. And I see that in a lot of the work that you do is, is about attachment and keeping families together with your uh, immigration detention, children with the children uh, within the child protection services and those types of things. It, those things are really important. They strike, it seems to me that it's all surrounding keeping mothers and babies together. Yeah, it really is. I, I think um, I have a very uh, child rights focus um, in my work. That's how I approach it. And, and that's particularly helpful, um, I think, in terms of decision making and working out how to approach things. Uh, if you do have the child at the centre and you're thinking about, you know, what is going to be the best thing for this child, what is the best thing for children, um, then I think the pathway through is um, it becomes it becomes clear um, because they are they are the most vulnerable and unfortunately um, you know in most circumstances the, the rights and needs of infants and their mothers coincide they're the same so when you're advocating for infants um, the you're you're also advocating for mothers. Lastly, I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, of course the presentation that you'll be doing with us, Carlene. And I uh, just wanted to, if you could describe to us a little bit about um, what you found important and some of the things that really struck you as interesting during this actual creation of the presentation. Sure. So, so the presentation is based on research that I did with some colleagues based in Vietnam and the US looking at uh, what COVID-19 guidance said about maternal and newborn care and how well it aligned with the WHO recommendations. So mid-March last year, just over a year ago, um, WHO put out their recommendations saying that if mothers had COVID-19, essentially that the same ordinary recommendations for maternal and newborn care applied in terms of maternal proximity and breastfeeding. But unfortunately, there were many authorities and countries that were um, making recommendations that were different. Um, and so uh, with these colleagues, we collected together as much guidance as we could to actually, I guess, uh, record that detail that and see what was happening um, and what was happening in different parts of the world. So, so my presentation is going to be talking about that and also about the implications of um, some of those recommendations and practices um, for mothers and infants and in, in the short and the longer term. And also look at some research that's being done by other people um, around this, looking at you know, what's the, the risk benefit balance there um, and uh, you know, how, how that might play out in, in particular contexts like in um, NICUs and neonatal nurseries. So, yeah, um, I mean, unfortunately it, it's not 
um, it's not a fabulous story uh, in that uh, things have been pretty bad. Um, but I guess if we look at what has happened, um, hopefully we can make things better. Hopefully next time we'll do a better job. But I think what's come through really, really clearly is just how important it is that we advocate um, for the importance of breastfeeding and for the importance of maternal infant proximity all of the time. Because when an emergency happens, like we've had here and the risks are raised, um, we need to have those established practices and beliefs in place. Because when the emergency happens, you know, if it's not there, then anything goes pretty much. Yeah, I know it's not always great news, look, reflectively looking back at um, how things were, but as you mentioned, uh, it, it's one of those things that we're still trying to get shed light onto, you know, so that folks know how important it is to have good practice and policy and unity in a lot of what we do, because sometimes it feels like yeah. we're just in silos, uh, all trying to do the same thing. So it'll be, uh, it's going to be a really important topic, I know, and I'm looking forward to, of course, you sharing um, the information on and I think ultimately this is all about helping our families move forward once again and um, helping them understand the the whys of what happened and then you know where they need to get to next so thank you so much I really appreciate you telling us all about it oh you're very welcome <laughs> <laughs> and just a quick reminder for all of our viewers listening in today, um, of course, you can go to the website right now to goldlactation.com and register for not only this particular presentation, but all the other wonderful presentations that we have online. And we'll look forward to seeing you there, of course, live at this event, if you can make it. And if not, it will be recorded for your pleasure as well. Thank you so much to Carlene Gribble for being with us here today and to all of our viewers. Bye-bye for now, everyone.